Hi guys, welcome to our YouTube special. We're here for another week of amazing women's football talk. What are we saying, Farrah? I'm saying I'm happy and smug this week off the back of the weekend's results. With your clothes on. <laughs> With my clothes on. <laughs> Mido. I was going to say the return. Mido. The return of Mido. It's straight impact earth. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. A touch. She'd obviously, uh, like, in terms of the assist for Russo's goal, mm -hmm. she obviously had a heavy touch. And in my head, I'm thinking, she ain't going to go for that. You know, when you come back off the back of an ACL, big injury, you're mm -hmm. kind of a little bit hesitant. She didn't care. Yeah. You see how she, you see how she stretched Lent and I'm thinking, woo. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, she got an assist and obviously had an impact in that. 12, 14 minutes, what, 12 minutes at a time? You can talk to me about that in a minute. But yeah, she had she had an impact and it's it's great to see that she's actually back. And now she has to start building her minutes because mm -hmm. I think she's a, a big and key part to this Arsenal team, you know, moving forward. But 12 minutes at a time? Yeah, 100%. I think even just when Beth was even warming up, it's the crowd, like, didn't it? It was like a fortress. I, like, I promise you, like every time <laughs> she even done a calf stretch, they were like, Wait. I was, was like... Was she playing to it? Mate, well, she, you know, well, it's her, she, she's earned the right, right? In terms of, of like having that crowd behind her. Um, so yeah, Beth was, it was a, it was good to see, see her back. Obviously someone who's had an ACL injury, it, it's not easy to, to recover, but... You've had one, right? So the psychological to... comeback, because she did it on that pitch, right? She mm -hmm. did it at the Emirates. So to return there as well as in your first minute, like what would that be like? I ain't had that. I mean, God, I ain't gonna get one yeah. now. Yeah, but <laughs> pray. <laughs> um, I, I don't know. I guess you've been training so long, and I guess physically you know it's ready because mm -hmm. you've done all the rehab. You've you've been out. You've done the running. You've taken all those stages. Um, I guess from a mental point of view, you have to then shift in terms of you have to just trust that it's right. Otherwise you're never gonna be able to perform at that level mm. again. So I guess your love for the game just kind of overrides that. And I'm sure she would have been that doing like training games and stuff yeah. before she'd gone out to, to obviously a full match. But yeah, I think just naturally, this autopilot, it just kind of kicks in. I think scared. if you don't do it though. I'm scared. Yeah, <laughs> so I'll give you, scared. so when I done my first one, obviously the rehab and stuff was like super good when I was at Charlton and the women's team was there and then the women's team folded and I done my other one, I kind of knew what to do from before. Mm -hmm. So I kind of rehabbed it myself. But yeah. then in your mind, you're almost like, mm, oh. like I can, I can say it's right, but where's the like official person mm -hmm. who's like, it's right. So yeah, and then after a while, I guess once you just get out there and you do a couple of growth turns and you not make someone, then you, you she, know you're back in the she game. She did all right. She's, well, she's back and, and for Arsenal, that's only a positive. They've got a couple more to come back, Miedema and, mm. and Leah, but uh, that's the positive from Arsenal. Three mm -hmm. points, so they they now picked up four points from from three games. Obviously, a slow start from them. The return of Mead, positive. But so many people have like Instagram tweeted us about the squad photo, oh. and obviously it's Black History Month, so it's something that we probably shouldn't avoid. And maybe as we're being asked the question, maybe have an opinion of what we think of Arsenal. Basically, put their squad photo out, and no player of diverse background within that picture for probably. The last two in three years has that been now? I think. Yeah, obviously you've got Michelle, who's obviously gone on loan to Watford, so that's one player who's sort of come out of that photo. And I think we can't we can't beat around the bush. Mm -hmm. Like for for me as an Arsenal player, signed for Arsenal when I was twelve, like we had so much diversity in the team, from Neats to Rochelle Shakes to Alex Scott to Yankee. There were so many people. Mary Phillips, Mary Sanderson. Phillips to Leanne. So yeah, yeah, so loads, many. Yeah. That's what I mean mm -hmm. to even to look at. And I think. Because it's a London club as Dan well. Carter, there's a, like, when you think, yeah, there's been like there's there, so but... much opportunity to have diversity in that team. And I guess when you're when you're looking at the other side of London, you look at Chelsea, mm -hmm. they've got a wealth of diversity. So mm. whether that's homegrown players or whether they've gone out to the US or wherever mm. across Europe, even in Manchester, look, they've got players in. Mm. What is it in terms of I don't know, is it a recruitment thing? Like, how do you feel as a diverse player that Arsenal potentially could be the club that you can play for? I yeah. think that's, for me, it's not really a blame game. I'm trying to think like, how does a young girl believe mm. that this is a club where I could be a player and I can represent my local team? Because mm. there's no one there that tells me that could be the, the team that I play for. And that goes for schools, that goes for youth clubs. We look at even the younger year, like year groups. We look at Ian Wright's granddaughter, she plays for the youth team. Mm. Does she see her? Where did, does she? Does she think actually I'm going to break the boundary 
yeah. as a young under 10 player. Like, why am I having to think that? So where mm. is the example? And I, and I think for me as well, from a recruitment point of view, we look at the World Cup, most of the players who are getting like player of the match, team mm. of the week, it's extremely diverse. Mm, mm, so mm. what is that recruitment? Well, Tottenham, their rivalries as yeah. well, just across there. What is the recruitment process? Mm. So I guess it's just a, a question and I'm sure... I guess um, from, an, from an FA point of view, obviously we we talk about, and this is obviously my own opinion, mm. we talk about the diversity in terms of the Lionesses and it's something that we're working on. But mm. actually the feeding pool for that mm. comes from our clubs. Yeah. So if we're not even what having them clubs at our club levels to bring them in. What are Arsenal doing? Like that's a thing. Like, I mean, look, I've got a good relationship with Jonas. Mm-hmm. And it, it, it may be that something that, you know, I'm sure he will be keen to either come on or have a conversation with us about. But what's changed with like, the community work that they're doing, for example, in terms of that kind of recruitment, because you think of like when you was a kid playing and even when I was playing against Arsenal back in the day, in, you know, mini tournaments, mm-hmm. the amount of diversity we saw with, within the Arsenal team and you kind of saw a pathway through into the seniors in terms of a player of a diverse background, but they don't seem to be that. So what yeah. has changed over the years that doesn't, is it, do you reckon it's because they've come out of London now? Remember there used to be like loads of little hubs they used to do yeah, and yeah. now they're out in St. Albans, for example. Is that something? Yeah. Like, could it be? I, like, I'm I don't know think, because they've got even, like even like even when you think about world class players that you want to bring in, yeah, like signings to make your team stronger, they haven't done that this summer with with recruitment. Exactly. So it's they're not getting them from abroad. They're not getting them from local. And even if I use myself and Rachel as an example, we're from West London, mm. so we went from west to north. Mm-mm. So we're talking about like a London wide thing. Like it's like yeah. how are they? How are you not getting? How are clubs not getting that level of diversity? when there's players across London and mm. London is a super diverse place. Yeah, sure. So this is this is the question, like, and who's looking, like, is it important? Who's looking at it? Because the so, whole idea- for, for me, there's so much hidden talent uh, from you think about diversity in, in, in estates and that's what, where we grew up, kind mm-hmm. of urban estates or whatever, and how much diverse players that was brought through because there was opportunity for youth clubs, for example, mm. that then was filtered through to say, for example, Centre of Excellence, which is now academies. Mm-hmm. Like, is that still happening? Like in schools, are there people like going into schools, recruiting within schools? I know obviously youth clubs have been cut and there's not as many as there was, but yeah. what is actually being done? Like, cause don't tell me that all of a sudden now in London, there's no players of diverse background that are good enough to play yeah. women's football at the highest level. Uh- and I guess for, for the, the first layer of this, obviously, is diversity in terms of skin colour because we can quite mm-hmm. obviously see it. Mm-hmm. But actually, it's just diverse oh, it's of individuals, like mindsets, like different classes. Like mm-hmm. do, there's so much that. What class am I in? <laughs> <laughs> you, you're sitting outside. <laughs> You've been chucked out. <laughs> You've been chucked Top out of, of class. class. You're, yeah, literally. All like right. just because you were the geek. No, <laughs> but I'm just saying, like, how mm. much more does that bring to? the culture of a team. Mm-hmm. Like if you just have one like mindset or yeah. one group think way, then when you need to get yourself out of situations or when think you need to dig a bit deep, who's that person? Or mm. are they gonna say, oh, is that half of the problem though at Arsenal then? Let's just have a, let's just hug yeah. it out. No, but I'm saying, is that half of the problem? Because I don't you, know. as you say, people from different backgrounds or, or, or in terms of mentality and thought mm. process and whatever else, as you say, sometimes in Arsenal have struggled mm-hmm. Has it been too much of the same that no one ain't took that initiative to make something happen differently on the pitch? Maybe less. Maybe the fans. Maybe we should hear from the fans. Like, yeah. what? Do, what do they think? Like, They've are they happy? Tweeted that... in, haven't they? Wanting to know about it? Yeah, so. but dude, like, let us know. Like, are you happy with your club? But is it just about actually? We just want to be winning. To be fair, mm. like first and foremost, let's get what's right on the pitch, right? Or actually. Do you feel represented? Because mm-hmm. when I even when I was at the Emirates, I was it was very diverse in terms mm-hmm. of the crowd. So I'm yeah. like the fan groups there. Yeah, like everything else is there mm-hmm. apart from the representation on the pitch. And for me, we have loads of initiative. When I see people taking the knee, and everyone on the pitch has nothing related to the knee other than maybe an ally, mm-hmm. it's a little bit difficult to say. Okay, what what do we do next? I don't know when you guys used to take the knee. What happened for the rest of the week after them taking No, nothing. The... And that was something that Dan Carter was, obviously she was at Reading at the time I was there and it was a case of still trying to educate mm-hmm. all of us. Um, but yeah, her thing was, okay, we take the knee, but what do we do after that? So that was all so, that, like, like something that she was trying to get the club to think about mm-hmm. outside of every week, just doing the knee just because, which is what it, it felt like for her. Yeah. We're doing it, but actually what work is going on behind the scenes to educate anybody else or community doing whatever X, Y, and Z. So you're right. What does go on behind the scenes after the knee for players, you know, are, are, 
are they educated any further? Do they have to think any further into it? Or is it just a, a tick box? We have to do it because that's what everyone's doing now. We want to yeah. still, you know, make people aware that it's important. Yeah, well, it's definitely an important conversation. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it'll be, it'll be great to maybe get some some players' opinions in terms of mm -hmm. maybe what they feel. Obviously fans say what, what they say, but actually let's see if we can speak to a couple of players and- At us. At, at us. DM, at, at BBB and um, get some opinions.